can we uh, talk about interactive proofs a little bit and zero knowledge proofs? What are those? Okay. How do they work? So interactive proof uh, actually is um, uh, is um, is a modern realization and uh, conceptualization of something that we knew was true. That you know that is easy to go to lecture. In fact, that's my motivation. We invented schools to go to lecture. Right? We yes. don't say, oh, I'm the minister of education. I publish this book, you read it. Yeah. And this is book for this year, this book for this year. We spend a lot of our treasury in educating our kids and in person, educating, go to class, interact with the teacher on the blackboard and chalk on my time. Now we can have a you know, whiteboard and presumably you're going to have actually with uh, magic pens and a display yeah, instead. Yes. But the, the, the idea is that uh, interactively you can convey truth much more efficiently. Mm -hmm. And we knew this psychologically. It's better to hear an explanation than just to belabor some paper, right? S same thing. So interactive proofs is a way to to do a following, rather than doing in some complicated, very long papers and possibly infinitely long proofs, exponentially long proofs, you say the following. If this theorem is true, there is a game that is associated to the theorem. And if the theorem is true, this game, I have a winning strategy that I can win half of the, of the, of the time, mm -hmm. no matter what you do. Okay, so then you say, well, is the theorem true? You believe me. Why should I believe you? So, okay, let's play. So, and if I prove that I have a strategy that, and I win the first time and I win the second time, then I lose a third time, but I win, every, say, um, more than half of the time, or I win, say, all the time if the theorem is true and at least at the most half of the time if the theorem is false, you statistically get convinced. You can verify this quickly. Mm -hmm. And uh, and therefore, is a much... When the game the game typically is extremely fast, so you generate a miniature game in which if the theorem is true, I win all the time. If the theorem is false, I can win at most a half of the time. And if I win, 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 you can deduce either the theorem is true, which most probably is the case, so to speak, <laughs> or I've been very, very unlucky because it's like if I had a uh, hundred coin tosses and I got 100 heads, very improbable, right? So that is a way. And so this transformation from the sta formal statement of a proof into a game that can be quickly played and you can draw statistics how many times you win and you is, a, is one of the big conquest of a modern complexity theory. And in fact, actually has highlighted the, the notion of a, of a proof as a really give us a new insight of what to be true means and what, what truth is and what proofs are. So these are legitimately proofs. So yes. what kind of mysteries can it allow us to unlock and, and prove? You said truth. Uh, so uh, what does it allow us, what kind of truth does it allow us to arrive at? So it enlarges the realm of what is provable because in in some sense the classical way of proving things was extremely inefficient from the verifier point of view. Yes. Right. So <laughs> and and so therefore there is so much proof that you can take. Um but in this way you can actually very quickly in minutes uh, verify something that is uh, the correctness of an assertion that otherwise would have taken you know, a lifetime to belabor and check all the, the, the passages of a very, very, very long proof. And you better check all of them because if you don't check one line, an error can be in that line. And so you have to go linearly through all the stuff rather than bypass this. So you enlarge a tremendous amount what the proof is. And in addition, uh, once you have uh, the idea that essentially a proof system is something that allows me to convince you of a true statement, but does not allow me to convince you of a false statement, and that uh, at the end says if it's a proof, proof can be beautiful, should be, should be elegant, but at the end says is true or false, if you want to be able to differentiate. It is possible to prove the truth and it should be impossible or statistically extremely hard to prove something false. 
And if you do this, you can prove way, way more once you understand this. And on top of it, we got some insight, like in these zero knowledge proofs, that is in something which you took for granted were the same, knowledge and verification, are actually separate concepts. So you can verify that an assertion is correct without having any idea why this is so. And so people felt to say, if you want to verify something, you have to, to have the proof. Once you have the proof, you know why it's true. You have the proof itself. And so somehow you can totally differentiate knowledge and uh, and uh, and verification, validity. So totally, you can decide if something is true and still have no idea. Is there why. a good example in your mind? Oh, actually, you know, at the very beginning, we labored to find the first knowledge, mm-hmm. zero knowledge proof. Then we found a second, then we found a third. And then a few years later, actually we proved a theorem, which essentially says every theorem, no matter what about, can be explained in a zero knowledge way. Okay. Wow. So it's not a, a class of theorem, but all theorems. And it's a very powerful thing. So it, we were really, for thousands of years, bought this identity between knowledge and verification had to be hand in hand together and uh, for no reason at all. I mean, we had to develop a way of technology. As you know, I'm very big on technology because uh, it makes us more human and uh, and make us understand more things than before. And uh, and I think that is a, that is a, uh, that's a good thing.